So in this video, we are going to discuss about crosshead type engine lubrication system. And in this diagram only, wherein it's a block diagram and a line diagram, wherein in this block diagram only, I'll be explaining you all the components. Okay, so in case of crosshead uh, type engine, the underside of liner is separated from the crankcase by means of a diaphragm, as you all know. This means that liner cannot be splash lubricated and separate cylinder lubrication is necessary. So there has to be a separate cylinder lubrication. Now lube oil pumps for last two stroke crosshead engines are not engine driven but are electric motor driven. So you can see here. So these are the pumps and they have their uh, motors. Okay. Uh, because and they are provided in redundancy because all almost all the pumps on the ships they are provided with the redundancy pumps are provided in duplicate and work in auto standby mode that is failure of one pump or the loss in lube oil pressure will automatically the standby pump if auto standby mode is selected so these lube oil pumps are in auto standby mode uh, lube oil pressure this is lube oil pressure uh, regulating valve now this lube oil pump takes suction from the lube oil sump so this is main engine lube oil sump sump tank so we have two types of tank that is wet sump and dry sump so uh, main engine that is two stroke engine they generally have what is known as is the dry sump when we have a separate tank outside but when we have the sump below the piston in the under under piston space, space altogether and there is a splash lubrication like in the generator engine so that is what is known as we have wet sump Okay, so these lube oil pump takes suction from the lube oil sump through the suction filters. So we have these filters, you can see here. Uh, lube oil pump suction filter normally have magnets to catch metallic debris caused due to wear in various moving parts of the engine. So there will be metallic debris, uh, which reasons that is there um, that we have these type of magnetic filters present over here. This debris is washed off from various parts of being lubricated to the crankcase and finally into the lube oil sump. So this is uh, passed into finally into lube oil sump altogether. Now during suction filter cleaning, the metallic debris collected at the magnet should be checked. More debris means the rate of wear is high and vice versa. Now discharge of pump is provided with a pressure regulating valve which automatically controls the discharge pressure of the pump irrespective of lube oil temperature. Okay, so we have discharge, uh, discharge of the pump is provided with a pressure regulating valve. So this is what is known as uh, what we were discussing about is a pressure lube oil pressure regulating valve. So function of lube oil pressure regulating we, it automatically controls the discharge pressure of the pump irrespective of lube oil temperature. Low lube oil temperature will lead to more viscous resistance, more viscosity, thereby increasing the lube oil pump discharge pressure. So it will regulate the discharge pump pressure. Okay, now a pressure sensor is provided on the pump discharge, which automatically monitors the pump pressure and sends signals to the pressure controller. So, so see here, this is a pressure controller. Okay. Any increase in pressure will tend to open the pressure regulating valve by a greater amount, thereby controlling pressure to the set value and vice versa. Now, from the pump discharge lube oil goes to the lube oil cooler. So now it is going to the lube oil cooler, which may be seawater or freshwater cooled. Now the pressure of the lube oil side is always kept higher than the cooling water pressure to avoid contamination of lube oil in case tube leakage occurs. Okay, so we have always lube oil side pressure is higher because in case there is a leakage so we don't want the sea water to mix with the lube oil okay because that will corrode your engine okay a temperature control valve is provided which automatically controls the temperature of lube oil outlet so this is what is known as uh, we have a temperature control valve altogether in case lube oil outer temperature is lower than the set value, then the cooler bypass will open and vice versa to control the lube oil temperature set valve. So this is the bypass line that we were uh, talking about. And this is the temperature control that is there. Even depending on the temperature, this will open the bypass. Okay. After the lube oil cooler, lube oil uh, passes through fine filter. So now this lube oil filter, 
50 macron auto backwash type fine filter so you must have in your ships you must have done this routine it, is part of, it passes to the 30 to 50 micron these are fine filter duplicate filter is provided so that filter can be cleaned during engine running without having to stop the engine so it can be cleaned without running the engine thereafter oil goes to various places as shown in the figure so now it goes to the various places like uh, main bearing thrust bearing gear chain lubrication okay it uh, now for gear case soldier and other engine and chain case so uh, for we, we have in gear, uh, gear case in case of soldier and other engines and chain case in man b and w engines okay lube oil spray nozzles are provided which spray pressurized lube oil directly onto the loaded portion of the meshing gears chain sprocket okay so we have uh, what is known as uh, uh, your all together that is chain sprocket and meshing gears so we have what is provided is spray nozzles are provided with spray pressurized lube oil directly onto the uh, loaded portion of the meshing gear chain sprocket oil is also supplied in form of spray to the tilting pad type okay so oil is also provided to the tilting pad type so uh, this is what is uh, there uh, now thrust bearing thrust bearing are required to transmit axial propeller thrust to the ship's hull the engine thrust bearing foundation okay engine thrust bearing foundation lube oil at same pressure of about 3 to 3.5 bar is supplied to crosshead bearing by means of telescopic pipe so this is a uh, crosshead bearing so here it goes by means of what is known as telescopic pipe in case of man b and w two stroke engine and other design in case of soldier engine now there is a difference between soldier and man bmw so in case of soldier engine the lube oil is first supplied to engine driven or separately driven crosshead lube oil pump all modern engine have electrical driven crosshead pumps the crosshead pump develop high pressure of about 12 to 16 bar which is supplied through articulated swinging arm to the crosshead bearing in soldier two stroke crosshead engine now from crosshead the oil comes in out into slipper pads and is directly supplied to the white metal bearing okay now from crosshead here it will go to the white metal bearing white metal bearing or uh, this provides lubrication between the guide and the slipper pads okay this is providing uh, lubrication between guide and the slipper pad thereafter oil falls back into the crankcase so then we have what is known oil will go to the again to the main engine crankcase now from uh, from crosshead oil Crosshead oil is also supplied uh, upward for piston cooling through outer annular pipe uh, located inside the piston rod of the piston. The piston cooling oil after cooling, after cooling the piston is drained down through the inner annular, annular pipe in the piston rod and falls, fa uh, falls come out of a drain pipe connected to the crosshead through a temperature side glass, temperature sensor and non-flow alarm. In case piston cooling is ineffective, high temperature will be noticed at the oil outlet. In case of failure of lube oil flow etc., no flow alarm will be given. Alternatively, the watchkeeper can see regular flow of piston cooling oil at the outlet. Now, from crosshead oil goes, oil also goes through drilled passages inside the con rod to the bottom end. Okay, to the uh, you see here is the con rod bearing and the bottom end bearing okay connecting that is con rod is that is connecting rod now in case of turbocharger do not have a separate lubrication system they will invariably okay here we have a turbocharger so now before that sorry uh, before that we have this uh, lube oil is also led to the cams cams this here now uh, cams roller guide camshaft bearing and finally to the hydraulic pump for actuating hydraulically operated exhaust valves hydraulic Opening spring air closing exhaust valve rocker arm is absent in large two-stroke engine. From hydraulic pump, the oil is sent to uh, to the for opening of each exhaust valve. Now, in then we come to the turbocharger. In the last, in case of turbocharger, do not have a separate lubrication system. They will invariably be supplied from main engine lubrication system. Lube oil is provided cooling and lubrication to the turbocharger bearing. The oil outlet from the turbocharger bearing is normally led back to crankcase through a side glass. From engine crankcase, the lube oil drained to sump through strainer plates, that is sieves, provided at the bottom of the crankcase. Lube oil sump is 
not an integral part of the bed plate but in a part of the ship structure and is normally provided in the double bottom space okay the lube oil sump is surrounded by coffer dam and all sites to prevent contamination of lube oil from surrounding tank in case of any of the sump boundaries develop a leak lube oil sump will be provided with vents with flame traps now the lube oil sump will have a sloped bottom towards the end of the sloped bottom the lube oil purifier suction is located so here you see here it is the uh, here is what is known as uh, here we have not shown the suction but here the pump is taking suction purifier suction will be here somewhere in the this is known as the sloped bottom the design that we are talking about the lube oil sum will have a sloped bottom towards the end of the slope bottom lube oil purifier suction is located from where lube oil purifier takes suction purify purifies the oil and returns it back to the sump continuously so it is in closed loop so it is sending the oil to the purifier and then again it is uh, giving it back to the engine here in diagram it is not being shown it is important to note that the suction of main lube oil pump is kept away from the sloped bottom to avoid sludge water into the pump suction so here it is in a two separate periphery so here you have this pump suction here you have this purifier section we have also steam coil which is contain if required it is continuously heating the oil okay to maintain the viscosity so i hope it is clear for you so the reason being is that we have here is that in case of crosshead type engine the underside of the liner is separated from crankcase by means of a diaphragm this means that liner cannot be splash lubricated and a separate cylinder lubrication is necessary which makes it important and lube oil pumps are provided in redundancy that is 2 in number okay thank you so much